Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai. Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai. All praise, glory, and honor goes to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakadash. Okay? There were others to the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. Okay, and who was taught his truth. Shalom, wa barakim, la bakari. Peace and blessings to the elect. Lord's will, this video is edifying. All right. I'm going to start it off uh, in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6. And I'm going to read verse 20. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bring it to a kingdom. Verse 21. If you delight, be then in thrones and scepters, O you kings of the people, honor wisdom that you may reign forevermore. Okay? But through the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, the Lord is about to give a kingdom, okay, to his people, okay, the nation of Israel, starting with his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. All right? And that's why the Lord, all right, is raising up his men in these last days. Okay, with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, because what? Through that wisdom that the Lord has given his men, all right, starting with the elect, is going to bring forth the kingdom of the Lord, okay? The kingdom of the Most High, which is a kingdom that's going to stand forever. So we'll read this again. It's wisdom of Psalm 6 and 20, 20. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bring it to a kingdom, okay? And the men of the Lord are desiring wisdom, acquiring wisdom, all right? And the kingdom is being established, okay, on the earth. OK, it says, if you delight, be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that you may reign forevermore. OK, now this is the book of Second Ezra. Chapter six, verse seven. Salakia. All right. The second as a six, verse seven. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of times? And what shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? All right. And so the end, Ezra is asking, What's going to be the end all right, of the kingdom of these other nations ruling? All right. In the beginning of, of it that followeth. All right. Which is Yahweh Shai's kingdom. All right. Yahweh Bashin Yahweh Shai's kingdom, the kingdom of Israel. Okay. Verse eight, he says, He said unto me, From Abraham. Unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. All right, because this was symbolic. Okay, Esau came out first, and Jacob's hand held the heel, representing that Jacob was going to take down Esau. And how is Jacob going to take down Esau, which is a so called white man, a so called wicked race? All right, that's the, the return of Yahweh Shai, who right, comes from the tribe of Judah. Okay. It says, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right, so the kingdom of, of Yahshua Allah, all right, is, the, is the, uh, the beginning of it that followeth, all right? It's the kingdom that the Lord promised his people, man. All right, the Lord promised his people. That's the promises, all right, that the Lord was going to give the kingdom, all right, to the nation of Israel. All right, and Ezra is asking the Lord, when are we going to receive the kingdom? OK, and we're going to receive it in this time. All right. Because as soon as the so-called white man goes down. All right. That's when the kingdom is going to be established on the planet Earth. All right. Now, uh, this is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 45. And 17, it says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord. All right. And how are we going to be saved? The Lord's going to give us a, a, a kingdom, man. All right, he's going to give us a new heavens and a new earth wherein righteousness dwell. All right, the law, statutes, and commandments is going to be uh, established on the planet earth. Okay, this is how Israel is going to be saved. It says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. All right, because what? The kingdom that the nation of Israel is going to receive is going to stand forever. All right, that's why it's everlasting. It's never going to fall. Okay, ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. All right. So like I said, the kingdom that the Lord is going to give the nation of Israel is going to be a kingdom. All right. That's going to stand forever. 
All right, it's not going to fall. It's going to it's going to stand. It's going to be established forever. All right. It's the book of Daniel chapter 2. All right, and this is going into the vision. All right. Of the statue and Daniel broke it down. All right, we know that it was uh represent different kingdoms. All right. And this is uh the 44th verse. This is Daniel 2. And 44. And the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom. All right. Which is Yahweh. All right. Yahweh Bashin Yahshai is going to set up a kingdom. It says, which shall never be destroyed. All right. And every kingdom that has ever been established on the earth have been destroyed, whether it be the Roman Empire. All right. Whether it be America, because America is about to be destroyed, whether it be the Babylonian Empire, Egypt, all these different empires. They had a time that they ruled, and they had a time that they fell. All right, but the kingdom that we're prophesying to come, that's going to come to the nation of Israel, is going to be set up by the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and it's never going to be destroyed. All right, it says, in the, in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. It's going to be established forever, for eternity. And the reason why is because the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father are going to be what govern that kingdom. All right. So it's going to be a perfect and righteous kingdom. It says, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. So when the, when the nation of Israel gets set up into power again, all right, no other heathen nation is going to come into power ever again. They're going to be in subject. They're going to be in tribute forever. Okay. These other nations, the so-called white man, the so-called Chinese man, so-called Indian man, all right, so on and so forth. They're going to be in slavery and they're going to be a subjection to the nation of Israel forever. Okay. It says, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Because when the Lord comes and destroys America, all right, which is uh, has bits and pieces of all these ancient kingdoms that ever stand. When the Lord destroys that kingdom, that's like the Lord destroying all these kingdoms that ever was on the planet. Okay? And the kingdom of the Lord is going to stand forever. Okay? Now let's go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14. Verse 1, it says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. All right? So look, this is the salvation, the kingdom, mercy. All right? It's all coming to the nation of Israel. All right? The Lord said it twice because Jacob and Israel is the same thing. Israel, Jacob's name later got turned into Israel. All right? So it says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. And set them in their own land, and the stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. All right. It says, verse 2, it says, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. All right. So once the Lord gives us the kingdom, establishes us, as a people, okay, we're going to have slaves. These other nations are going to be our servants, our handmaids, okay, and we're going to rule over them, all right, just as they ruled over us, man. It's, the only, it's a righteous thing. The scriptures say it's a righteous thing with the Heavenly Father to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, okay? So it's a righteous thing for us to rule over these other nations. And another thing, how is it a kingdom if we don't have servants or slaves, Okay, and this is going to be the ultimate kingdom. So, of course, our kingdom is going to have to have servants and slaves. And who are going to be those servants and those slaves? Okay, it's going to be these other nations. Okay. Verse uh, three says, and it shall come to pass in the day the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So the Lord's going to deliver us. All right. From this captivity that, they were, that we're in right now, man. All right. The hard bondage. Okay. And right now, it's really, it's really mental right now. But the Lord's going to deliver us from this, man. He's going to give us rest, eternal rest. He's going to give us peace. Okay. And we're going to rule over our, all of our enemies, man. Okay. Which is the uh, righteous thing. All right. So back in the second Ezra 6, I'm actually going to jump down to... Uh, Verse uh, 54 
Second Nether 6 and 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. All right. All in different nations, nations come from Adam. Okay. It says, and the people also whom thou hast chosen, but the Lord has a chosen people. All right. And that chosen people is the nation of Israel. Okay. And their time to rule is coming. Okay. That's the prophecy. All right. And it's going to start when Yahweh Shah makes his return. All right. That's why we're hastening the day. All right. And we're uh, hoping that the Lord makes his return swiftly. Because when the Lord makes his return, that's the end for these other nations. All right. And that's the beginning for us. That's what we read in 2nd Edges 6. Esau is the end of the world, all right? So not only the end for Esau, but these other nations too, okay? And what? Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, all right? Because the Lord has a chosen people. Verse 55 says, All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. So the Lord created the earth. He created everything. He created paradise for us to enjoy, okay? The people of the Lord, all right? It says, As for the other people which also come of Adam, all right, the people that are not the chosen. It says, Thou hast said that they are nothing. So the Lord said they are nothing, man. There's a scripture in Isaiah that says that what? These other nations are, are less than nothing, man. Okay, they're, they're less than vanity. Vanity has a greater purpose than these, than these other nations. All right. It says, But be like unto spittle. Spittle is spit, man. You, you spit on the ground. Do you have any regard for that? No. That's like these other nations. It, say, it says, it has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. All right, so you got a bucket of a, a vessel holding in your water. And then a little drop falls out. <clears throat> Are you about to go to the ground and try to uh, mourn? Are you going to go to the ground and mourn for that drop of water that you lost? You're going to keep on walking as if it didn't happen, man. That's what these other nations, it says the abundance of them. Is liking unto man, they ain't they nothing, all right. And that's a blessing, all right. That's why we we uh, thank the Lord, all right. That we're Israel, man, and the Lord is dealing with us, all right. That's why it says in um Psalms, get that real quick. It's the book of Psalms, and I'm gonna end this uh soon, all right. But this is the book of Psalms, one forty seven, and verse uh, nineteen. He showed this word unto Jacob, his statutes and judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and for his judgments they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So we're supposed to praise the Lord that the Lord has not dealt with these other nations as he's dealt with us. And that we're the chosen, man. All right, so back in uh, 2 Ezra 6, in verse uh, 57. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. And that's what they're doing. They're in power. Okay. But what? That's coming to a cease. That's coming to an end very soon. All right. It says, but we, thy people whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover are given into their hands. All right. And that's true. That's not deny. You can't deny that. We're in the hands of these other nations, chiefly the so-called white man. All right. He's doing whatever he want with us, man. All right. But the Lord is about to come back and set things straight. Verse 59 it says, if the world now be made for our sakes... Why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? How long shall this endure where we're not in our kingdom, where we're not in our rest? Okay? And the answer to that is not long at all, man. All right? We're at the doorsteps all right, of the Lord uh, coming and making his second return. Okay? So uh, let's uh, get Second Ezra uh, chapter 2, and I'm going to end it on that. It's a second as it's two and 13. Go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. All right. So our Lord already got the kingdom already prepared for us. All right. We just got to uh, hasten the day. Continue to stay spiritual. All right. Continue to grow in wisdom. All right. Next thing you know, all hell's going to break loose. The kingdom's going to be here. All right. So, Lord, this is an edifying video. We'll give all praises, glory, and honor to you. How about Shun Yao Shai, Bashim Rukai Kadash? We'll give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Shalom, Wa Barakim, Lahabakari. Peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom.